I don't even know where to begin with you. We're here to see Goldblade tonight, and it is your only show for this year, am I correct? Yeah, because we're super busy. It's hard, because cause doing the membranes as well, it's just really hard to cram everything in, and all, loads of other stuff you do in your life. And being a band is really good fun, but there's a lot of messing about to make everything get done, you know? There's a lot of arranging, it's, and who's going to arrange it all? Mm. Just don't have the time to arrange stuff. So, but this is a very important gig, because it's a friend of ours, Kathy from yes. Rockers, and she's not well at the moment, so... We're doing it for her, so we, we, we probably wouldn't be playing at all, apart from the fact it's a really important context. Yeah, yeah it, you're really here for Kathy. Yeah, I would say. yeah 100%. I mean, she's, she, I've known Kathy for years, way before Rockers. In fact, I knew her brother first, okay. for about 35 years ago, been around Manchester. So it's a friend, you know, and um, I think it's important to do things like this for your friends, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. And not just the membranes, you also are a TV commentator, an author, I think seven books. Um, you work at Rebellion and uh, are usually holding the microphone yourself. Um, you keep very busy in the world of music. How did that come about? I, I, I don't really know, there's never any game plan. I mean, when I got into punk rock and punk rock was so powerful in the 70s and one of the key messages was that DIY thing, which I actually think is better saying DIT and they do it together. It's like everything works better in teams, don't I it? I like that, yeah. yeah. But it's also about empowerment, so it can make a lot of like nerdy, self-conscious little kids suddenly believe they could do stuff. So that was that was me. Mm -hmm. You know, I always loved music. I loved glam rock when I was a kid growing up. Mm -hmm. But I mean, David Bowie and Mark Boland yeah. were gods, but they were gods, weren't they? We were yeah. just bumpkins and Blackpool. Mm -hmm. We we could love that music, but we could never thought we had the opportunity to ever make any music. And punk basically, by default, said you could do it yourself. You know, so we went out. We we, we misinterpreted basically because I don't think they actually even meant that. Mm -hmm. But we said, great, like, we can do that like all the way up and down the country. There's people like us. And post-punk was basically that process of people taking the energy of punk and not being able to play, just playing it all back to front and wrong and venting their own music, which is basically what the membranes was then and still is to this day. It's not, there's nothing that, pro it's not proper, it's not musical. It's quite funny if we go in the studio, the, uh, the engineer said, can you change something after four bars? And we're going, what, what are bars? Oh, yeah. I, I still don't know what they are. I mean, we, we, we just count the riffs and change. <laughs> That's pretty much the best way to do it, I think. I, I'm sure it's probably better to know what the bars are, but I've just never got around to learning. Everything's just so on instinct and feel that it, you don't, sometimes you don't even count the riffs. You just, it feels right to it change It feels right it. to go. And, yeah. But in my case, I can read music. I studied it when I was very young. I can't play it to save my life. So reading it doesn't help. Yeah, but, but it's, it's a great skill to have. I'm not anti... Um, anti knowledge, you know, it's just I just never got around to learning it, which always makes me laugh really. Yeah. 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 Well it's it's a useful skill, but going on instinct I think is a much better way to be creative and let it come out. It was a great thing because it gave people an in and a chance to do it. And what you did with that, you could do what you want with it. You know, if you end up a lot of people could start off with punk would end up making pretty different music. So you you found someone like Clint Mansell who started off being a little punk kid, did Pop Lee yeah. self and now writes amazing film scores in Hollywood exactly. with two finger piano, which he gives to an orchestra and they play and he goes, Not like that, not like that there. They're just like that, which is amazing, isn't it? He's he's it's all in his head, you know, and he still has a punk attitude to what he does, but it doesn't have to be uh, Blitzkrieg for two, like two chord, three chord music, you know, it could be, it's just the attitude to be able to believe you could do anything, be really creative, you don't have to be in a punk band, I mean, it's like that, um, you know, Jordan, the iconic woman used to work in, oh, yeah. yeah, you know, the amazing hair, Mondrian face, I mean, she's a really good friend of mine, and I would say that what she did with her clothes and her makeup was a punk statement, I mean, it, even though she's before punk, but it, as important as, as Anarchy in the UK or a seven inch single, mm -hmm. The punk wasn't just about, and this is how it got a bit sort of very narrow, it became four blokes yeah. making a punk song with a chorus, which a lot of that stuff's great, but it wasn't just that. I mean, equally important <coughs> was Jordan putting her hair up, painting her face, <coughs> wearing amazing clothes and getting on the train, everyone freaking out in 1975. You know, that, 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 that's a, a work of art, you know, a work of art made by a person who's not been to art school. You know, it's, it was art for everybody. Anybody can do it. That's the basic underlying message of what punk is, isn't it? Yeah. It's, not, it's not a style of music, basically, is it? Exactly. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. It's an attitude. It's not this type of music or that type of music. And, and punk, musically, has so many genres and such breadth. Um, the Manchester Punk Festival that we were talking about earlier, people were saying, oh, that's not a punk festival because it didn't have street punk or 77 punk in it. No, it's punk. It's just not 
that kind of yeah, punk. No, no, it's it's an it's, attitude. It's really mad when people argue over what what it actually is. It could be anything you want, you know. It doesn't. I will mean, say, like when people sort of say they when people try to define punk in an argument or a conversation, actually instantly out of the conversation because you you try to define something that's indefinable, and but by doing that, you've kind of uh, negated actually what it was in the first place. So nobody can tell you anybody what is or isn't punk. If you want to be a folk singer or or, or, or be a conductor in an orchestra. If, if you've done it with that kind of can-do attitude, that's what's great. I mean, a lot of music and art is made by people who, who come from very wealthy backgrounds, have the time, the money to do it. And one of the great things about punk was it opened the door for everybody, you know, and that's important, isn't it? But whether it's you want to make uh, make bake cakes in your own way, your own style, or you want to make music, it's maybe it takes that little empowerment and energy of punk to make you believe that you can do it because basically education is there to teach you um how to be a, a servile servant you know yes sir anything but punk was the opposite of that it's basically saying you walk in a room if there's 30 kids there and say any any of you people in this room the thing you really want to do just go and do it let's see what just come up here and do it and they go i don't want to get from the class come on come and do it just do it do it do it and they get on doing it and they go wow that was amazing that was fun, that's right? kind of punk as well whether it's standing on your head or playing the guitar and where people get it wrong is they think it's a style of music you know it's just just guitars and that and which is great i mean i love that kind of music but it's not the only thing there's, there's a whole raft of different things exactly yeah. <laughs> in a record shop with boxes and tables as drums and, yeah. and I actually prefer doing that more than anything though I like that idea that you could just you could play anything go in a room and just start doing it yeah. we did that gig on the tram a few years ago yes I've really seen the fun. video of that yeah that looked fun yeah yeah and I, I like the idea that music yeah. it's kind of funny isn't it because it's, music's so formalised isn't it it is PA amp 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 drums sound check da 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 
but surely you could just do anywhere like that, can't you? you know, it's, 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 it should be an open and free form, shouldn't it? Yeah. It, it really should, and yeah. hopefully we will see more of that, more people getting involved in doing whatever it is that strikes them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I think it happened, well, that happens now, because nowadays you don't need punk anymore for that message. That message is all pervading, isn't it? So, like, there's more bands now than ever has been before. It's interesting because um, Idol's top five, you know, I'm with top five, massive band, and it's an amazing band, noisy, quite chaotic. Lots of songs about toxic masculinity, so it's very important politically. And people say, "Oh, it's a punk band," and they say, "We are not a punk band," and it's freaking people out because they say, "Well, why you should be a punk band?" Because you, they go, "But we don't want to have a, a parents' generation legacy." So people say, "Say to a band like that, okay, you're a punk band. So how come you haven't got the right clothes on?" And it's like, "Well, we didn't say we were a punk band." Yeah. I mean, the ideas don't have to be encased and enshrined in punk. They're for everybody, aren't they? They were probably there before punk. They were. They were the, the, the hippies Absolutely. had those ideas. Some in the 15th century would have had those ideas. They're not. That was just a moment in time, a brilliant moment in time, where those ideas got um, escapulated in modern electric folk music is what punk is. Absolutely. And you could do what you want to that energy at that point in time. It didn't mean it was invented then. It doesn't mean it stopped at that point, you know. You know I always say my father listened to a lot of the early 50s rock and roll. That was punk for its era. And there was before that... You know, the, the uh, big band, in a way, was punk for its era. So every era has its own punk. We've just labelled it. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, I mean, it's great because I, I guess you, you need a lazy shorthand just so you know what something is, you know. Yeah. So, um, but can you imagine what a Heartbreak Hotel Elvis would have sounded like when it came out? Was it 58 or something? Can you imagine hearing it on the radio? People, people say when they heard it, it was life-changing. You never heard anything like it. Exactly. So powerful, isn't it? Don't need to call that punk. It's just... A, it's just it's just a moment of, of cultural power, isn't it? Exactly. You still get that. You still get that. People always say, oh, music is better years ago. You go, no, it was. If you're 16, you'll still hear a piece of music now. They'll make you stop in your tracks and life goes from uh, monochrome to technicolor. It always happens, doesn't it? Exactly. You know, that, that moment in time when you wake up, you know, like when you talk to people and they talk about, I like this music, that music. And suddenly I heard this record and everything's like, whoa. <laughs> Absolutely. And you have me smiling because I'm thinking back and I had my music and then... I bought Nevermind the Bollocks when it came out, and I was, what, 12 years old? And that literally, the Technicolor was like, boom, oh, there you go. That's it, that, I found my place. And then people will have that with every kind of music and every kind of thing. People forget how amazing the Pistols were, really. I know, I know it's quite fast, we're probably underground punk circles, saying, oh, you're going to a real punk band and all that, but <laughs> I, I mean, arguably, they, they were the only real punk band because without them, nothing would have happened, would it? They really kick-started <laughs> the whole movement, and here we sit. It you was know. the Heartbreak Hotel moments, wasn't it? When Anarchy came out, for most people outside London, it's the first thing you'd ever heard that was a, a modern, of that time, punk record. I mean, of course, you could say, well, Saints before that, but the Saints are amazing bands. But it's, it's almost a different style of thing because the Pistols had the whole thing, didn't they? Because they had the sound of it and, and the, the, that weird, intense claustrophobia, brilliant lyrics. Mm. And they had the look as well. You never saw anything look like that before. I know every, because Lydon's so iconic now that you know that look. It's, it's everywhere. Everywhere you go, you see that picture. Well, the picture of him in the early days. But the first time you ever saw him, a picture of him in 76, it was just like, wow. I didn't know a human being could even look like that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. He just pulled it out and just yeah. somehow inspired a generation and, and then and even though he's kind of trashed his own myth a bit like Morrissey does over the over the years by by doing interviews where you think are you you really mean that what well, I can't but I don't but there was a moment of time when everything he said was so perfect you know yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't know what happened there which side of him or has he just simply changed I, I, I just think um, if you keep on doing that thing you just try and wind people up yeah. you actually start becoming the thing if you're not careful that's a really good point <laughs> I don't, and when, when you're 19, being, a, um, be, be, being contrary is a pretty cool thing. But when you're 63, it's like, just say what you feel. Yeah, 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 yeah. just be honest inside yourself, yeah. not trying to shock the world. Yeah, yeah, no one's shocked anymore. People just go, go resigned, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, here we go again. And you have interviewed so many people over the years. Who has been your most challenging interview? Uh, what, difficult? Yeah. Um, Nearly always go really well. I think um, Blix Bargate was difficult, de deliberately being contrary and, and quite rude as well, in, in a pointless way. Yeah. yeah. And I, th I think um, you were talking about Jolly Baffert before, and he wasn't difficult because he talked a lot and he said a lot of good things, but he just doesn't really listen to. He's, you don't. There's not actually any point in you being there, which you don't mind. I don't. I always say there's not actually no point in me being here. I don't. I don't have to be there. I don't have to impinge myself on there. I'd, I'd rather be invisible on the stage. Yeah. No one's come to see me. Everyone's come to see the person I'm interviewing, haven't they? Exactly. Yeah. Itself was not an anti-nuclear movement. 
The anti-nuclear movement was the movement. Crass was one of many different kinds of musicians who provided music, lyrics, and inspiration. Culture, an inspiring culture that helps inspire movements to political, non-musical, non-fashion ends. That's why divide movement versus culture. Which is a good place we have to end. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, shall I get after? That is the interesting thing, is you really have an art to the interview. And I really am honored that you've taken the time to speak with me, because you really are such a good interviewer, and you just seem to know what to ask and, and how to ask the right questions of people. So thank you for being an inspiration to another interviewer. Well, you're doing the same way. You know, I, I don't think there is a skill to it. I think you just have to be interested in people. Yeah and talk to them, you know, if you engage that person, you get an interview. Does, I mean, occasionally you'll get somebody's delivery difficult, but nearly all the time, the other, other person reacts to a person's interest in what they're doing, won't they? And I like this, I, I like the conversational style. Yes. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, there's no right or right, wrong way of doing it, but I don't like having questions on a clipboard, because I don't, I don't like to be, I guess it's from being punk rock in it, but I don't like to be boxed in. Yeah. Like you ask one question, they give you an answer, then you go all the way over here, the next question, yes. Because sometimes the answer can go over here and you go, well, that's interesting, I never thought of that. I'm going to pick up on that and go over here with them. And exactly. The questions do come from the responses, at least for me, and, and obviously it's where you are as well. Yeah, I mean, f free form is good, isn't it? I like things that are free. Yes. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. And, and speaking of free, I think you need to run and get some things done. We're catching you just before you're getting ready. Yes, because we haven't played for ages. <laughs> Yeah, well, last time was probably last year at Kathy's last gig. Last year, yeah, 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 yeah. I will let you guys get to your rehearsal, and thank you so much for taking this time. It's really appreciated. Yeah, yeah.